Today, I'm sharing two retro Christmas ideas. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is a collectible deer box. Taking one of these little gift boxes from Dollar Tree. You can get these in a variety of sizes, but mine is about a, looks like a four and a half by four, something to that effect. I'm using some verbiage from a mini pack of paper, and then this pretty piece of paper that came in a big paper pack. This is a Walmart ornament that I actually paid full price for this year. Can you believe it? I had to have it. Couldn't find vintage, but I think this one is vintage enough looking. I'm going to use bottle brush trees and a variety of ribbons. These are pretty old. The one on the bottom is pretty old. This is not so much. And then this one and this other one are kind of newer. This is just going to give us a variety of textures and colors. And then I've got some red jute. You can use things like border stickers if you would like. You can really get creative with this project to make it your own. So we'll start off by taking this little overlay off of the box. We're not going to need it, so I'm just going to clean it up. I'll tear off that paper and then pull off those little foam stickers. I'm measuring out my paper here so that I can use it to wrap around the box. And I'm writing on the back side. Then I'll draw a line right down here. Most people know how to do this, but if you want to know how to make a nice straight line, this is how you do it. And then you can just cut that out. Now the paper's not quite big enough to go all the way around, so I'm going to have to patch it. So what I'm going to do now is put these pieces side by side, and I'm going to mark on Santa's beard. And then I'm going to cut out about a... Mm, I think it's probably two inch, like a little two inch patch here, two by four. And I am going to just use a little hot glue to put this down. No need to really do Mod Podge or glue. That, you can do it that way, but it's going to take longer. So if you want to do it a little bit quicker, because it's pretty involved, the hot glue is going to work fine. You could use double stick tape, whatever you want to use, depending on how permanent you want this to be. So I'll start off by putting the patch down, and then I can wrap that bigger piece all the way around. And then, of course, the area that has the patch is going to be the back of the box. You can line up your patterns if that's something that interests you. Not a big concern for me today. And then I'm just going to roll it around here and then glue the other side. You can use any type of scrapbook paper you like, and you could also definitely use like a gift bag if you could find a nice retro print on a gift bag. That would work too. Now, are these projects exactly replicas of vintage? No, but they're my interpretation of it and I think that it'll work. I mean, you get the idea. And based on the feedback that I've been getting from the comment section, most people do like the projects that I've done. So I have decided to follow your advice and your um, kindness and to keep trying to do some more retro for you guys. So this is my interpretation. Now the same technique that we used for the bottom part of the box, we're gonna use for the lid of the box. Going to make a little patch to go there, measure it out, make a strip, and then cover it. Now, for the top of the box, I have some fluffy white yarn, which I wanted to use because I think it's going to give it a nice base. You can either paint your lid white. You can use some of that faux snow, those sheets that you can get from Dollar Tree. You could use something like that. You can use an old white washcloth. You can use a piece of white fabric. Any way that you want to do this. I want this to look like a bed of snow, so this is why I chose to use this. You can see that it kind of frays and it's sticking to my finger protector there. 
just going to add glue and wrap it like a cinnamon roll. Just keep going around and around all the way to the end. And if you don't get the perfect round in the middle, just fill in the blanks. You know, fill in the little spots if you have any little missing spots. I ended up with a lot more on one side of the box than the other, but I patched it in. I'm going to take that screw out of my ornament because it's not going to be an ornament anymore. I'm going to add some hot glue once I know where I want him to sit on there, and then I'm going to place him down. I'm pressing it down, not too hard, but enough that it's going to go through all the way down to the box top. That's why I've used a lot of glue here. I do not want anything falling off. This feels like it's a plastic. It doesn't feel like it's um, breakable, so that's good. Then I'm going to take the trees. I don't need stems on there, so those can be cut off, and then any little frayed pieces can be cut off so that this sits right down in the snow. I like two here. You can use one. You can use white trees. You can use trees with a different shape, whatever you are going for. But I did notice with the vintage that you see a lot of bottle brush trees. So that's kind of what I'm going with here. You know, this it's going to have a little bit of a rustic flair to it, I think. Now, I've got, I had a little package of mini ornaments that I got from... Goodwill. You can see them laying on the table there, and I picked two stars out to put on the top of the trees. One is silver and one is gold, but I'm going to make them both the same shortly. I'm going to use some of those beautiful ribbon to go around the box to make sort of a banding. It's going to go right underneath the glue line, the yarn line, excuse me. I'm just going to press that down in there. And where it looks like it's fraying, that's just where the it's kind of sewn together. So I can just patch that down by adding a little bit of glue and putting it right back in place. And I'm going to go all the way around the box with this. You can use decorative trim. You can use um, some sort of a like a lace trim you could use here if you wanted this to look more Victorian. Whatever colors that you like, whatever scheme that you like, you can go ahead and do it that way. These vintage ribbons I got all on the same day. I have some blue, some pink, some lavender. They're stunning and I cannot wait to use them when we do our Victorian crafts together. So back around to the beginning, I've glued it down, make it look nice and neat. You don't want anything hanging out, so I'm pulling off my little extra glue pieces. And this is how it looks so far. Then I can choose one of these little squares here as like a sign to go on the box. So I'm going to use the one that says Merry Christmas. I've just cut it out. I'm using a piece of foam board. Getting an idea of how much I'm going to need so that it has a little more dimension. And then I'll just use my glue stick as a base and put it all over this foam board. And then put that piece of paper right down on top. And it looks like a sign. I like it. You can kind of crease that and then make a little bend in it if you want to so that it'll lay flatter on your box. I'm going to use this piece to cut into sections to make a square, almost a frame around our box. So now that I know how much I'm going to need, I'll just start cutting off those sections. And you see me here counting how many loops I have. So I'm sure to get this fitting perfectly on there. So I'll do one on each side. I know it's not easy to see, and I do apologize for that. I was getting carried away. And then I'll put one across the top and one across the bottom. Now to use this beautiful gold cord. I've had this forever, and I have never used it in one project. So now we're going to use it. I'm going to use this to go right around the bottom. I'll start in the back over that little gap piece that we had and then just begin to lay a bead of glue little at a time and press that down. I put my thumb under the bottom of the box to make sure that this piece of cord does not go under the box because I want it to sit nice and flat. So that's what I'm doing there, making sure my edge is nice and flat. And we'll do this all the way around. If you don't have this type of cording, and I'm telling you, 
Dollar Tree has come out with some of the most amazing things in their Crafter Square. You can probably find this any, any, any day walking into Dollar Tree. Maybe not the same color. I know that I've seen white before. Um, you just kind of have to kind of work with what you can find. You could use an old shoelace if you wanted to, if you had something that was the right color. I don't know. That's thinking outside the box, huh? Okay, now turning the box upside down, I'm going to flip that ribbon over so that it's going in the opposite direction of the lid. And I'm sitting it right next to the cording. Doesn't that look pretty with that Santa paper? That's a really pretty paper. And I know that you can get something similar at Hobby Lobby. I've seen people use that paper before, but this actually came in a paper pad um, that a friend gave me. She gave me lots of paper and this was in there and I was tickled to death to get it because that is a beautiful, beautiful Santa photo. Okay, so you can kind of get the idea. This is how the little box is going to look so far. This would be such a cute little keepsake box, I think. Maybe you could put a special ornament in here. You could put a gift in it for somebody who really likes the vintage look and they could use it every year to decorate. You could even fill it with candy. So now I'm going to try to center this down. I put the lid on so I'd make sure that the lid won't overlap onto the sign. Taking this gold paint, I'm going to go right over the top of that silver star because the main tones are going to be, um, it's going to be gold. But you can mix your silver and gold together, certainly. For the table scatter that we're going to use as ornaments, it would have been really nice if I would have had red and green. That would have been so pretty in the tree, but I didn't have those, so I'm just going with what I have. You could use something like buttons in your tree. You could use mini pom-poms in the tree. You could use garland strands that have the little beads. You could do that if you want to. You could just decorate this any way that you would decorate maybe a regular vintage Christmas tree. But I thought this was, this was good. I thought this one did the trick. I've just picked out some white and gold and I've just added it here and there in those trees. Don't want to do too much there. And I think so far, so good, right? Now I'm just going to take some of the bigger white ones to look a little bit like snowballs. And I'm going to add those here and there around the stump that the deer is sitting on. And I'm just going to, wherever it feels like it looks right. I'm going to add some more in there. And you really have to hold it down to make it stay. Now, for using a spray Mod Podge, I like to use this with my snow to make things stick, but you've got to be in a well-ventilated area. You've got to open a door, you use a little short burst, and then quickly get that snow out and start putting it down. You can use the iridescent snow that you can get at Dollar Tree or whatever you have on hand. I thrifted this. I've used it in several projects, and I absolutely love it. I am going to try my best to find something under this brand to put in my Amazon store for y'all in case you were looking for this fine, fine, powdery looking snow rather than the flakes. So I'll see what I can find for you. All right, so I'm just gonna, I got it over this box here and I'm just gonna continue to get it out of the box, add a little glue where I need it and continue to add it onto the deer and onto the trees. So see, I've added some to his back. That's pretty. I really like this project, it's so sweet. What would you do with this box? Would you gift it or would you use it for decorations in your own home? The next project is the Claus campsite. This one gave me so much joy as well. So you remember this sign. I've taken it apart like I do with lots of crafts. We're going to use it again. Bottle brush trees from Dollar Tree and the little vintage Santa and Mrs. Claus. They need a little vacation getaway, right? So... I got them an Airstream. Fab Lab is the name of this. I know you can get some Fab Lab on Amazon, but I cannot find the particular one. So wherever you can find one, I'm gonna use a elephant gray paint to start off, and then I'll be using some silver on top. I'm gonna use a flat brush just because I love a flat brush. Use whatever you wanna use. Foam brushes seem to take in a lot of paint, but then you end up washing a lot of paint out of it. So I feel like these waste less paint. I'm going to go all over the entire thing and the bottom and everywhere except the door 
and the window frames and the wheels, of course. Once it's dried, it only requires one, one layer of paint. I do go back over those areas underneath where it's no paint. And I'm gonna grab that beautiful silver and go right on top. I looked up Airstreams and vintage Airstreams and a lot of them were like a silver color or a almost like mirror finish. You could just almost see yourself in them. You can also, you know, they also did like blue and different colors, but I really like this this look of the silver. So this is what we're going with for Santa and Miss Claus. I mean, I figure the rest of the year they're going with wild colors and all that. So if they're on vacation, they ought to have a little more peace, right? Yes. Now I'm taking this wrought iron paint and I'm going to put this on my wheels. I don't like the stark black look necessarily for this, so this dark gray will work. I'm going to use my saw and since this is a birdhouse, I'm going to just cut down the size of that little perch to look more like a doorknob. And now I'm going to sand it because we want everything to be nice and finished and pretty. I'm using my diamond nail file that I get from Dollar Tree. Highly recommend this for filing these small things. It really sands them down nicely. And then once it's nice and finished looking, wipe off the dust. This is how it's gonna look so far. Grabbing my white chalk paint, I'm gonna go over the door and both window frames. It's a little bit out of focus, so forgive me for that, but I think you get the idea. This is November and it is Subscriber Appreciation Month for this channel. So listen very closely because I'm going to be giving you a magic word that you're going to need to comment in the comment section below. And I also want you to check out the rules and all that that I will have linked for you in a pinned comment. Good luck! So if you want to paint this rather than putting something over the top, all you have to do is use some tape on the back and then use a little bit of spackling on the front. Make it nice and smooth by using a little makeup spatula or whatever you have to get the excess off. Let it dry and then you can paint it. But for me, I'm going to use this snow sheet. It doesn't have any sparkles in it. I'm going to fold it in half to make it nice and thick. I'm going to trim the bulk of it off so it's a little more easy to manage. And then I'll begin going around the edge with the glue. It is folded over, but I'm going to open it and then do the next layer. Let me get it all the way around, and then we'll be able to trim it off. This is like a batting, so it gives a little thickness, and it looks a little bit more like snow, I think. I mean, it's all make-believe, but you know, I think it gives a good look. But you do whatever works for you and just use what you have. Okay, so once I've got that second layer down of glue, I'm just gonna press it down and press it, kind of a little bit of tension pulling it outward before I cut it off to make sure that there's plenty all the way to the edges. I don't want anything to show near my edges. If you want a high-end look, you really have to pay attention to details. And I know that you can do that. It takes a little more time, but it's definitely worth it. So once the circle is out there, I'm going to trim this out. I've added a little hot glue, fixed the little raveled piece there, and I know you can't see again, I'm sorry. But there you go, there it is. And I'm gonna kind of put that down right where the wood and that white fabric meet and then press it down. Working in small sections you can use your cool temperature setting on your glue gun and protect your fingers for this because you're going to have to be touching this. I'm also going to see how I want to add this on my little camper here. I can always trim out the door. I think I want to trim out my windows. So I'm just going to trim it out you know, add a little hot glue and tuck that right up against the frame. This also covers if you have any little bumps of paint or little spaces that you couldn't get into. This is going to cover that up. They'll disguise it and you'll never even know it. I'm going to go all the way around. I generally like to start on the bottom. That's just a personal thing. You can do it however you want. If you want to start yours at the top, you can do it that way. Whatever works best for you. 
is going to be the perfect thing for you. So then I'll trim it off and do the same thing over here on this window. Now you can use any type of jute. You can use a ribbon here. If you don't want to do that, you can grab your puff paint. You can make some decorations. I didn't want this to cross over into a gingerbread look. For this particular video though, not everybody does gingerbread. I do have a gingerbread video though. So feel free to go check that one out when you're done with this one. Now the windows are all decked out. It looks like Mr. and Mrs. Claus have been decorating. And it looks a little bit like it's got ice or snow on it. I'm gonna go around the window because instead of being a birdhouse and this being an opening, this is gonna be their window. And the perch is now the doorknob. If there was any way to get on the inside, I could have done like a stained glass look, put like a little curtain in there, that would have been precious. And then trim off. There are just so many options in crafting, right? So many different ways you can decorate with colors and textures. So my little trees here, I'm just gonna give a quick little wrap with the same cord. It sticks in there without needing any glue. It just grabs right down into those little needles. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and trim it off. Now I'm gonna grab some of those bottle lights that I use all the time that I love. And fortunately enough, I found a big old pack of them when I was thrifting, so I've still got some to use. And then I use them from project to project. So I just kind of reuse them over and over again. All I'm doing here, I know it's difficult to see, all I'm doing is wrapping the lights around that silver cord. That's all I'm doing. And I'm gonna wrap it around just enough Probably, I think I do like a strip of about seven or eight inches, and I go back upon itself, go back and forth until I get it back in the middle. And then that way I know exactly how much room I have to wrap it around my trees to make sure I have enough. I'm gonna add hot glue and then firmly, firmly hold this down into that fabric because it can go through that fabric and onto the board underneath and that's what you want because when I start adding snow to this project I'm gonna have to turn it upside down to tap off the excess so you want to make sure everything is firmly glued into place and you can tell by kind of wiggling the trees if they're wiggling a lot from the base then they're not all the way glued down onto the um, the base that they're sitting on they need to be all the way glued down now I'm just gonna make this go right between the trees and then they have like a little string lights behind their camper. But the base is firmly planted on there. And don't worry, we're going to disguise the little end down there. You can use Dollar Tree lights for this. Now to make a better base to glue this down, I need to make a little raised area so that it will actually touch without me gluing down the wheels. I want a wider piece so that this really doesn't fall. So I'm just using the handle from a foam brush to put up under there because I save that kind of stuff. You know how crafters are, we save it. I'm gonna paint it gray, let it dry, and then we can start adding on the glue. I'm using Gorilla Glue for these projects so that nothing comes off. Gonna add a little underneath the front little trailer section, the little trailer hitch, and then I'm going to press it down firmly the same way as I did the trees so that nothing falls off. I wanna cover up those little wood bases, so I'm cutting circles and putting a little slice in there like a tree skirt, but it's only gonna be with the white and it's not gonna be for decoration. It's gonna kind of be to disguise those pieces to make it look like the trees are coming out of the snow. But you can use the little fluffy snow for this too if you wanted to, to make some little mounds and heels. I didn't have any of that with me, but that would have been ideal. That would have been really nice, but you get the you get the gist here. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other and you can pull a little bit on the that fabric. It is does have a little give. Cut the little slit in it and then fit it right around the base of the tree and the little trunk there. 
and then I'll be pressing that down in place. And then adding a little bit of glue so that it doesn't come up from the bottom. And this is how that looks. Now I'm going to glue down just a little scrap of that fabric onto the top of this. Now if you have the little square box from Dollar Tree, you can do the same thing. You can cover it up. Or if the box is small enough to go under whatever birdhouse or little piece that you use, you can slide it underneath. I do actually discover that at a later point that it will fit right under there. So now we're going to take Santa and Mrs. Claus and find a nice place for them to stand outside of their camper. That, po that position looks pretty good, so we'll, we'll go with that. Their feet are nice and flat, which is perfect. Y'all, these are vintage, and they are made in Macau. Macau, Maku, something like that. Yeah, I looked them up. Then we're going to put Miss Claus over here on this side. And then I'm pressing firmly, just like with the rest of them, really press it down. I decided they needed some electricity in their camper, so I'm going to take my little tool here. Be super careful. You can use a drill, however you can uh, get into this piece of wood. This is a very light crafting wood. Very light. Is it called basswood? Maybe. And then I'm going to just take another one of those string lights and just feed it right through here now when i first started doing it it was trying to come out the window in the front so i just poked it back in there i hold my hand up there in the front to make sure that everything stays on the inside you see it's trying to come out the window i'm just going to feed it all on the inside this is a these lights that are on the inside are a nice yellow color and then the ones that are in the trees are a bright white color So here is their house lit up and their string lights in their trees back there. Their party lights. We don't know what kind of life they live when it's not December. We don't know, do we? Now I'm going to take some Mod Podge and just a old brush here. And I'm going to go across the top of the camper. Because it is still cold. They're not having a beach vacation. It is still cold outside, so... I'm going to add a thick layer on the top and then just sort of dry brush it going down so that it looks like it is kind of, you know, how snow settles. I'm saying this like I'm so familiar with snow living in South Alabama. But when I see it on TV, it looks like the snow is really piled up on flat places and then it kind of tapers off. So that's kind of what I was going for here. <laughs> My own artistic interpretation. And then I'm going to add to the top of their boots, to the top of their heads, top of their hands, their arms, any of those little areas. And then I'll begin to sprinkle on some more of that snow. We're going to put a lot on the top of that camper there. A lot on there. Then I'm just going to turn it over the same box and I'm just recycling. I'm going to tap that off. You see how well everything is glued? Like I'm really really bumping it around there and nothing is coming off. Doesn't that make a huge difference though? Now I noticed that it's such a, it's such a silly thing but to me I just thought you know what I'm a short person and I always appreciate a step to get into things so we're going to make a step to go in the front here so that the clauses don't have to jump into their house going to add some hot glue around a little building block that I just wrapped with some of that same snow. I'm going to brush some of that Mod Podge on it and then put a little bit of snow on the step so that it blends in with the base because we have it all around the bottom too. I sprayed it and got it all covered and then I'm going to take a really fine brush and go on the windows right around the tops of the doors and on the top of our of those little pieces of cording that we put down because that's where snow would settle, right? So we want it to look nice and frosty right there. I'm just using my fingertips to put that on. And then I've added little red bows to the windows. You can put anything you want on your windows. You could put a peppermint on there, just whatever you want. 
Now, I'm taking three different size little pom-poms and we're gonna make a very, very simple snowman using just a little bit of glue. And I did press the bottom down so it would be flat. I'm gonna add the medium size in the middle and the smallest one on top. And this is how his body is gonna look. Then using just a drop of hot glue and some leftover little branch pieces that I cut off, I'm gonna tuck those right into the center section to give him some little stick arms. And then we can spray him and frost him too. But he, always had, he already has some little frost on his arms. But you can add more. Very simple, right? Now he needs a scarf. I'm gonna use that same red string there. And I'm just gonna make a very loose knot, just enough to make it look like he might be wearing a scarf. And then glue the little pieces down and trim it. And he's ready to go in the backyard. Now, that scarf is not too long anymore. I'm trying to decide where I want to put him. I think I'm going to put him right here. It's between the camper and the tree. I'm going to add some hot glue on that bottom section and just place it down. I'm just pressing on the bottom section so that it didn't fall apart. And this is how that will look. You can see a little frosty in the background. So the magic word, the key word today is going to be Santa. So I want you to comment Santa for your chance to win a prize this week. The prize this week is going to be a glue gun with some glue sticks. That's right, and I'm gonna add some more goodies to the box. Remember to check out the description box below for the rules and all the information for this appreciation giveaway. Here's the first project. It is our decorative deer box. And this is what she looks like when she's completely finished. A little baby deer, still got her spots. Love it. And here is the little camper. Don't forget, put Santa in the comment section below for your chance to win. Only one person will win each prize. I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up if you have been enjoying it. I appreciate so much each and every one of our 28,000 subscribers. I have reached over 2 million views and I couldn't have done that without you guys. I appreciate you so very much. From the new people, a big welcome and for the ones of y'all who have been cheering me on for longer than that. I appreciate you so very much. I would love, if you have not subscribed already, for you to subscribe to this channel, click that little notification bell, and check out the community tab to make sure you don't miss if you happen to win, because that's where I'm gonna be posting the winner. Share the video if you know of anybody else who would like a free goodie, or who likes retro or vintage Christmas decor. Everything you do to help this channel is the reason that we are where we are right now. And that's why I want to show you that I appreciate you. Because I really do, and I'm very thankful. I believe in you. I hope you find some joy in your day. See you again soon. Bye.